the shekel of the sanctuary, you know what I'm saying? I was like, that gotta be according to what the priest got up in that building. I was like, any other shekel y'all going off of that might work out there is cool. Yeah, buddy, you know what I'm saying? You come here, you gotta use a book at a set standard, you know what I'm saying? You know, look at you like, yeah, that thing worth twenty dollars in this yeah. other city. This thing's thirty over here. You know don't bring that thing around here no more. You better take that thing somewhere. We don't mess with your shekel, boy. Right. Oh, man, that's our book, right, sir? You get that right currency. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor comes goes through the Father to the Son. I'm sorry, through the Son to the Father, in whom we call Yahushua. Uh, it is through him that we have salvation. Um, if we, oh goodness, I throw myself all the way off. All right, go. Mm, not according to works, that's any man should boast. To the Father, through the Son, it is given freely as a gift to all those who obey him. It is given freely as a gift to all those who obey him. If we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. In other words, your butter still go to hell, right? Make that thing real clear for people. It don't matter what you experience, what you what you deal with. If you don't get it right in terms of the uh, in terms of the instruction that the Most High God gives you, we'll still end up in hell. So this is our plea, right? This is what we do. We say, we say peace to the saints that are in the room and saints that are watching in, saints that couldn't make it. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing that we plead to everybody is that they repent, change your life, and they turn to the Most High God for good for the rest of their life that they might be saved. All right? Let's go to, uh, let's take it old school. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter uh, 29. Isaiah chapter 29, give me verse 13, verse 12. Give me verse 12. We ain't touch here in a minute. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 29. You don't want verse 9? I won't give you verse 9. Is that what I want? Yeah. This is Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. He said, stay yourselves in wonder. He said, go ahead and cry out, right? Cry. He said, they are drunken, but not with what? Not with wine. Uh, Zahar, go grab me uh, three waters. One, two, three. Go give me three waters. Yeah, you might have to get a little, little bit of help. It, it hasn't been opened yet. A little bit of, yeah, three, three bottles of water. Thank you, son. All right, so he said, they drunken, but not with wine. All right, what else? They stagger, but not with strong drink. He said they stagger, but the reason why they staggering is not strong drink. Right? What else? For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep mm -hmm. and has closed your eyes. Mm -hmm. The prophets and your rulers, the seers has he covered. Right? So everybody who would tell you the truth, right? The prophets, right? And the rulers, the leaders, right? He said he's covered their eyes. They put them in a position where they can't really tell you where to go. Right? Keep going. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. He said the vision of all, all right, have become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Go get him another one. Go give me one more, son. All right? Thank you, son. I appreciate you. Go give him one more. He said the vision of all. You can keep that. You can keep that. Um, he said the vision of all have become as the words of a book that's sealed. Thank you, son. I appreciate you. So in other words, what he's saying is the prophecy that builds this book, the prophecy of all, right? All the prophets of God, we've been sealed to it. We don't understand what's going on, right? We don't get it, all right? Let's figure out why. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Uh-huh. Wait, no, 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 no. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. He said, I can't read that thing because it's sealed. That's what we're dealing with right now. Right? He said, read this, I pray thee. He said, I can't because it's sealed. Right? Let's figure out why. Let's keep going. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. Uh-huh. And he says, I am not learned. He said, but I'm not learned. So what, what, what the Most High God is trying to explain to us right now is this book, the book, the Bible, right, is just as if 
someone handed you a book and it was sealed. Or someone handed you a book and you weren't able to read it because you weren't learned. You've never been taught how to read. Right? Once, when we approach the Bible, if we have that mindset, if we have the mindset that God, before we even got started, God already told us that this thing was going to be tough. Right? It was going to be tough that we would already look at it and be like, "Mm mm-mm. That changes, right? It changes when you set that expectation coming in. We look at it and we have the expectation that this should be easy. Right? I should be able to look at this and just understand it. Why can't I get it, God? But when you know this is going to be a struggle, I'm going to wrestle with it a little bit. When you have that expectation, it changes. It will create a little bit of endurance in us. And that's what we're here to do, to break down the barriers, look at what God actually told us, get past all these darn myths that we've been taught, and let's look at the book and take it for what it says. Keep going. Let me show you what happens if you, if, you, if you look at the book, start making a whole bunch of assumptions, and don't actually learn from it. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The way that we fear God is taught to us by men. We're taught to fear God based off of men. Men teach us how to fear God. They teach us this is how you should treat God. This is how you should honor God. This is how you should obey God. He says it's taught to us by men. It's not taught to us by what the books say. It's not taught to us by God. And the reason why that happens is because we looked at the book and we said, I don't know what it said. So now I have to make it up. And that's what you have across America, across Africa, across Europe. You have churches and you have groups of people who are just making it up. They're improvising. They may know a little bit and then they improvise the rest. We have to get away from that. If we don't know, we have to say we don't know. God can work with an I don't know, right? What he can't work is I know and you really don't know, right? That's why the, that's why the Messiah, he told him, he said, since you say you see, your sin remain. If they would have just been like, man, I'm blind. They clearly can see in the physical. But he telling them, y'all blind. If they would have just rolled with him, be like, you're right, I must be blind. If you said I'm blind, most high God would be like, okay, I can work with that. Right? But since they were like, no, nah, I can see. You call nothing blind, I can see. They're like, yeah, okay. Since you say you see, your sin remain. I can't do nothing with you. We have to get that pride out of us. A lot of stuff that people call pride ain't pride. The pride is the simple stuff, right? We don't ever want to look at the simple stuff. Pride is the simple stuff. Whatever gets in the way of me obeying the most high God, let's look at pride. Right? Whatever gets in the way of me learning this word, whatever gets in the way of me setting aside the life that I live to change, to live the way according to the most high God, might be pride. Right? Let's open up. Where we uh where we leave off with uh, last week? Uh, Deuteronomy eleven. I think we're on twelve now. Deuteronomy eleven. The end of eleven. All right, so let's do Deuteronomy chapter twelve. Let's get back into this glorious law. We learned this law. I'm telling tell you, you learned this law. We gonna have we gonna have we gonna have some uh some good wisdom on our hands. We understand where things came from, how things set apart. Once we get into the history, then we can start tying stuff back. How does it happen? Why does it happen? You know what I'm saying? Why do they have this mindset? Why they operated like this? Why are these things a problem versus these things not a problem? Right. Why is God so angry at them for doing this? Everything ties back to it. Goodness gracious, that was some good water. We left on 11, 28. Maybe we can start on 12. This is, uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12. Give me verse 1. Y'all want verse 1? Yeah, give me verse 1. It don't matter. <clears throat> it's Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of your fathers gives thee to possess it. Uh-huh. All the days that you live upon the earth, uh-huh. you shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye possess serve their gods, upon the high mountains and upon the hills and upon every and under every green tree. He said utterly destroy. Keep going. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of this out of that place. All right. Let's learn about God. The God said, tear these tear the people stuff up. When you go into this land that I'm about to give to you, you, you jack they, excuse me, you jack they stuff up. Right. Let's learn about God. They want to teach you about this white Jesus hanging 
long, flowy hair, right? Look like he wouldn't harm a darn fly. Let's learn about our God. Let's let these people, stop letting these people lie to us about God. Once we do that, then we have a clear perspective. Let's see what God is capable of. Right? Let me just see what he's capable of. Once we see what he's capable of, maybe we understand some of the stuff we've never understood. Right? He said, you go in there and you jack these people. You tear it up. Keep going. You shall not do so unto the Lord. Wait, wait, sorry. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. Uh -huh. And ye shall hewn down the graven, image, graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. That's right. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, uh -huh. but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, uh -huh. even unto his habitation shall ye seek. Uh -huh. And there you shall come. Uh -huh. And there you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes. Right. And have offerings of your hand and your vows and of your free will offerings and your firstlings of your herds. Right. So this is this is our history, right? A lot of people look at stuff as like it's religion and and like it's uh like it's religion or for us it's like culture, religion, politics, it's all that wrapped in one. Right? So this is our heritage. This is where we come from. The way our things were set up is the most high God gave us one place to take everything, right? And we would bring our sacrifices there. We talked about this a little bit before. We would bring our sacrifices there. Our sacrifices was a way for us to eat meat, right? So, if, you know, I'm saying, I want to eat some steak. I'm going to bring my ox, right? I'm going to bring my ox. I'm going to let my ox get slaughtered by the priest. The priest takes some of it. Now the priest gets to eat, and then I take the rest. I feed my family. So this was our economy. This is how we set it up. Everything about us was about sharing, Right? I take, I have a crop, I grow my crop out, it grows, it's harvest time, I harvest it, but I don't harvest all of it. I leave some of it. Why? Because there's poor people in my city. They might be walking around, they grab it, they can eat. Right? So everything that we did was about sharing. It's about making sure that everybody is taken care of. We share with our priests, we share with our Levites, we share with, uh, you know what I'm saying, we share with uh, our people. All these things is about sharing. We look at this. And we look at the, the New Testament and we let Christians teach us the Bible and then they get to telling us Old Testament done away with. Well, how is it done away with when the Most High God still telling us to share? He's still telling us to look out for the poor. He's still telling us to look down, but look out for the downtrodden. He's still telling us to, to look out for our leaders, right? The people that teach us the word. All the principles are still there. What changed? Right? What's done away with? It's just that we never knew. We never knew the Old Testament. These people never taught us this stuff. So since they never taught us, when they come to us telling us to change, we take it at face value, and then we throw away all this gold. Real quick, grab for me, because, uh, you know, I say gold. These people might think I'm lying. Grab for me, uh, grab for me, uh, grab for me, uh, Matthew chapter 13. Give me verse uh, 52. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Then we're going to come right back to where we are. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Yahshua said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? Uh -huh. They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, uh -huh. which brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. Right? He said, Everybody who's instructed unto the kingdom is like a householder who brings forth out of his treasures things new and old. He's talking about the New Testament and the Old Testament. It's a treasure. He says it's just like having treasure. New treasure versus old treasure. Why are we going to throw away some old treasure? I mean, let's see. If you go, what's that, what's that thing on PBS? You know, on PBS, they be taking stuff on there. What's it called? You know what I'm saying? On PBS, they take, they take stuff there and they like look at it and be like, oh, that's worth $1,000. Uh, antique Road Show, right? So if you take something to the Antique Road Show, you got, you got some treasure, right? One of them is new. One of them is old. Which one you think gonna be worth more? The old. The old. They gonna look at that and be like, "Wow, that hasn't been around in centuries." Same thing with wine. That's mid condition. But guess what we? That's guess what we taught to get rid of the old. That's gonna have a value. That's why our people are without value, right? That's why we don't value ourselves. 
that's why that's why we don't we don't have values as people. We don't look at it and we don't say, you know what? It's important for me to act this way. There's no value in the way we act, right? Because we don't value ourselves. Because we've thrown away the things that that teach us about our values. And then we let people kind of fill in the gaps of the New Testament for it. Because the New Testament without the Old Testament, you're gonna have gaps. Big time. Right? You're gonna have gaps. You're gonna have you're gonna, you're gonna have to improvise to try to get to that, and that's what happens. And that's how we end up being taught the commandments of men. Taught to fear God by the precepts of men, rather. All right? Grab, uh, go back, let's grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter, uh, what were we at, 12, verse, verse what? Verse 6. This is Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 6. And there ye shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes, uh -huh. and heave offerings of your hand and your vows and your freewill offerings and the firstlings of your herds uh -huh. and of your flocks. Mm -hmm. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto. Mm -hmm. Ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not do after all these things that we do here this day. All right, so Moses told him. Moses said, listen, we out in the wilderness. We walking around. Remember, we spent 40 years in that wilderness. So Moses told him, it was like, listen. Don't just do after, you know, don't, don't do like we've been doing now. You know what I'm saying? It's time to go into the land. It's time to get serious. Most of it, we've been walking around. Everybody's been kind of like doing what they want to do. He said, keep going. Watch this. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. He said, every man is doing whatever is right in his own eye. For he you, said, no, nah, we ain't about to keep doing that. All right? What up? For ye are not yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God gives you. He said, we ain't there yet. All right, keep going. But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God gives you to mm -hmm. inherit, and when he gives you rest from all your enemies round about so that ye dwell in safely, mm -hmm. then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. All right, so this is again talking about that place. All right, we have a specific place. That's where we bring everything to. Everything is built that way. All right, once you understand that principle, then you look at Yahushua different. Now you understand that when the man come back, everybody got to come to him, right? Because we that was already instilled in our mind, right? In our history, in our culture, it was already instilled. You have one place. You bring all, everybody got to come and bring your sacrifices. When it's feast time, every man got to show up. A man going to show up, what are you going to do? Leave his wife at home? No, nah, y'all come on. Most of the time, you come here, y'all come on. Bring my family too, right? So it's everybody got to end up showing up. Then you have a big party. Right? That's what it's about for us. He told us even in New Day, he said, don't forsake the what? The assembly of the brethren. Because everything is about us being together. That's what it's about. Right? Uh, destroy this temple in three days. What are you going to do to it? You destroy, you destroy this temple in three days, what's going to happen? I'm going to raise it up. And they're going to come right on back. That's what it's all about. He's our temple. Same so when we're looking at it, he's saying, I'm going to set one place and everybody going to go there. What do you think they talking about? Talking about Yahushua the whole time. This whole book talking about Yahushua. But we never been taught all this stuff we miss. So we learn about Yahushua and it's just like, oh, look at that. We got a whole book showing Yahushua. We learned about Yahushua from our youth back in our day. We just didn't know what we were talking about. Right? From our youth, our ancestors were learning about Yahushua. They was living out Yahushua. Right? They just didn't know. That's why he come along, he teach them, and it's just click, light bulb. Okay, now we can do something. Right? Keep going. Where we at? Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. There shall you bring all that I command you, your uh -huh. burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord. Before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he has no part nor inheritance with you, take heed to yourself that you offer not your burnt offerings in every place that you see. Uh huh. But in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command you. All right? You do everything I command you in that single place. That represents Yahushua for us. He's one single place that we all meet. Right? He's the center of everything for us. 
All right, keep going. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lustest after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Mm -hmm. The unclean and the clean may eat thereof, mm -hmm. as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Mm -hmm. Only ye shall not eat the blood, ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. Right? So we look at it, and we see, we see right here, he's telling us, hey, read that for me one more time, right? When he's talking about the roebuck, watch this. Notwithstanding, thou may kill and eat flesh in all thy gates. He said, y'all can kill and eat flesh in all thy gates now, right? Whatsoever thy soul lustest after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof. He said, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof. A lot of people look at that and they think, he's saying you can eat unclean meat and all that. That's not what he's saying at all. He's saying the unclean person, what would we do to our, if a person was unclean, what would happen to him? Take him outside the camp and he'd be separated. Right? You got an unclean person, your butt got to get out. You got to get outside the camp. Remember, we is in the wilderness. We had an entire campground. Right? And then all the campground, everybody was together. If you was unclean, you had to go outside of that campground into like an outer campground. Right? So what he's telling them now is you guys are about to move into actual land. That means people are going to have stationary houses. They're not going to have no tents that they can just pick up and walk out. They're going to have stationary homes. So he said, you're about to go into this land. He's saying, we're not going to do it as we do it today where everybody do us right in their own eyes. Right? So things are changing. He's saying, it won't make sense. If you're unclean in your land and you have a stationary house, we're not telling you to get out. Right? So he's saying, now it changes. You can eat in your own gates. Whether you're clean or unclean, you can eat within your own gates. That's a change for us. Oh, let's talk about why. So let's go to Leviticus. Um, give me Leviticus 17, verse 1. Yeah, that would be like extremely weird. You get into the land and you got to like do all that extra stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like certain things, it, it, was, it was designed for our time in the wilderness. Because the Most High God was walking among them. That's right. Right, we still had we still had our cleanliness laws and everything, but it's certain things such as eating, and we'll look into it. This, this is Leviticus chapter seventeen, verse one. It'll explain it for us. That's what it's about. We haven't had anybody to just lay out the facts for us, so we've been improvising. We've just been looking at it and saying, you know what? I think that's what this means. That's why everybody is unsure if they saved or not. That's why everybody is unsure. If 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 they pastor is telling the truth or not, or if 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 how do how do you know? How are you so sure that your understanding of the Bible is right when everybody says their understanding is right and every, nobody disagrees? The only reason we're unsure about that and we ask that question is because we haven't dug into it ourselves, or no one has taught us in detail what the book says. Once you learn what the book says, I know because I'm looking at it. It says, it's not like, this stuff is really not rocket science. It says exactly what it's saying, right? It's just that we have it, it's a lot, right? It's a lot of information, and we haven't dug into it. Once you read it and digest it and it sits in, then it's very clear. It's not like, you know, it's not like no rocket science. It's not something that, that you can't figure out. It's just, it's just a matter of digging into it, paying attention, making sure that it sinks in, and that we digest the stuff, and that we live it out, all right? This is uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 1. Let me hear what the book says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and unto his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, uh -huh. saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel, that kills an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or that kills it out of the camp, and brings it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord, before the tabernacle of the Lord, mm -hmm. blood shall be imputed unto that man. He hath shed blood. That man shall be cut off from his people. So you see the difference now? We had our law in Leviticus when we were walking in the wilderness. We had a law that you could not kill anything, right? Don't kill well, anything of the herd, right? Don't kill anything of the herd if you're not bringing it to the priest. If you have anything that you want to eat, you have your herd, you have your, your cows, and you have your, uh, your, uh, your, your sheep and your goats and all that. Let's say I want a goat tonight. I want to eat some goat meat tonight, right? 
we've been eating, you know what I'm saying, grain for a while, eating our vegetables, but my family's a big night for us. We actually want to eat some meat. I would take my goat, and technically I could just kill and cook my goat. The book is saying if you do that, while we was in the wilderness, if you do that, it's just like you killed a man. If you kill that goat, it's just like you killed a man. Because you know what the Most High God wanted you to do? We were in the camp. Let's be together. The priests need to eat. Bring that to the priest. Right? So then we would take it, bring it to the priest. Priest sacrifice our animal. It brings us to a, in, in a reverence with the Most High God. Remember, this is a teaching place for us. So we've been in Egypt. This is a chance for God to get closer to us. It brings us in a place where we're reverencing God. We're honoring God in the things that we do, even our food. Our goat get chopped up. We can cook our goat. We enjoy it with our family. And now this is a more spiritual activity. Right? It takes it from just being food to being communion with our people and spiritual and sharing with our priests. Right? So we look at that. That was our law. Now, what would happen if I'm unclean in the wilderness? I couldn't experience that because I'm outside of the camp. Therefore, I couldn't be I wouldn't be able to bring my goat to the priest because I'm unclean and outside of the camp. So the change, let's go back to Deuteronomy now. Remember, in Deuteronomy, I mean, in uh, Leviticus chapter 17, he's saying, do not kill anything of the herd. You notice he didn't say anything about the deer and the roebuck. He just said the sheep, the goat, the ox. The herd, right? Those are the animals that, that you keep, that you domesticate, that the work for you. You're not keeping no deer. You're not putting no chain on no deer and having it. Deers are wild animals, right? But when it comes to the, the domesticated type animals that you can keep, the farm type animals, right? The ox, the sheep, the, uh, the goat, those type of animals, you have those right here. You cannot kill them unless you bring them to the priest. Now look at the change. We're going back to Deuteronomy. Chapter 12, what verse? 15. Deuteronomy chapter 12, that's where we left off, or that's what I want? Left off. So give me Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 14. Your verse 13. Okay. Take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest. He said, now, this is changing. We about to go into this big old land now. Everybody about to have their own, own houses. At first, we all grouped together in one area. Right now we're about to spread out to this big land. Take heed that because we spread out, everybody not just offering everywhere. Because remember, our rule now was offer only to the priest at the tabernacle. Right? Everybody going to be spread out. He's saying, all right, we spread out. Don't mess around and go just offering wherever you want to willy-nilly now. That's not how we're doing it. Right? Let's hear it out. Take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest. Uh -huh. But in the place with the, which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there shalt thou offer thy burnt offerings, and there shalt thou do all thy, that I command thee. Uh huh. Notwithstanding, you may kill and eat flesh in all thy gates. Right? So he's saying, don't offer anymore, but I'm not telling you that now you have to go all the way, because the place that we're going to learn that he puts it is Shiloh, right? Which is in Mount Ephraim. Right, so he said, I'm not going to tell you that you got to travel all the way to Ephraim every time you want to eat. Right, eat some meat. He said, now don't go making offerings anywhere you want to all willy-nilly. You go to the place that I put my name. However, now you're able to eat flesh wherever you are. So before he told us, we had to take it directly to one place. Right, and if we tried to slaughter our animal anywhere else, take him out. Zah, uh, Zakah, get out. Go if you're going to cry. Right? He said, if we try to slaughter our animal anywhere else, that it'll end up being like blood to us. Now he's changing and said, okay, we're spread out. You can slaughter your animal wherever you want, but don't offer it now. Don't sacrifice it wherever you want. You can just kill it. Just kill it like normal. Eat your food however you want to. Watch what he said. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, Whatsoever thou soul lustest after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, uh -huh. as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Right? So he's saying you treat it the same way, just like the roebuck and the heart. That's a deer. Right? So he's saying just like the wild animals, we've never had anything against it for the wild animals. 
if you want to go get you a wild animal, you get it. You know, you're never gonna sacrifice a wild animal, right? So you got you a wild animal, you go out there, you go get a wild animal. So he said the same way you had you kill a wild animal and eat it that same night, that's how you can now treat your herd. That was different for us. So you see, the most high God is 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 he's reappropriating his laws for exactly where we are in that moment. Right? Some people will look at that and say, God never changed his law. That ain't true. That's not true. Right? That's not true. That's important for us to understand because now we start to understand the New Testament. Right? We start to understand why are things feeling like they changed? What changed and what didn't change? Why did it change? Right? We look at it in Genesis. He told Adam and Eve, don't eat of a fruit. Do we have that in our law? Is there anything in our law telling us don't eat of a specific tree? No. No. We never told us don't eat of no tree of good, good and evil. Good knowledge. Uh, what is it? Knowledge of, good. knowledge of good and evil. Right? That was given to Adam and Eve. That was their law. Abraham. Right? Abraham had a law from God. Instruction from God. That was his instruction. Right? So at different points, different people were given specific instruction from God. Our instructions were given to an entire nation to be passed down, right? Then when we get into our land, additional instruction was given. Certain instruction was saying, well, that doesn't apply anymore. You'll notice that when, as we get into the New Testament, right, we see that our temple goes away. In anticipation for our temple going away and us being kicked out of our land, what is the Most High going to say to us? Well, the time is going to come soon. We're neither in this mountain or in Jerusalem will they praise me. But in spirit and in truth will those worship me. Why would that happen? Because in anticipation, we're going to be out of the land. We're not going to have a temple anymore. So how, what was the Most High going to do? Is going to us, leave us without anything? How do we worship you now? We remember, we were always raised and taught. Everything we do surrounds what? The temple. The temple. Everything we do surrounds that temple. What happens when that temple's gone? We would have been lost. And a lot of us were, even, even though he gave us information. A lot of us were lost. Right? That's why he came along and he said, before this temple gone, let me make sure I talk to y'all. And I tell you, in one day, it's not going to be here or there that y'all worship, but in spirit and truth. So now that sets us up and say, okay, cool. We still have something to center ourselves around. Instead of the temple, now it's our other temple, Yahweh Shua. He speaks on that about the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel, right? In Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, when we got kicked out of our land initially and our temple got destroyed by the Babylonians, right? When that got destroyed, Ezekiel told us, go into the land. And the Most High told us, he said, I will be a little sanctuary unto you wherever you go. Why would he have to say that? Because our temple was destroyed. So he had to let the people know in spirit. That's the same thing as saying in spirit and truth. I'm going to be a sanctuary unto you wherever you are spiritually. I'm going to be a little sanctuary unto you, wherever you go. That lets us know, okay, that's all I need to know. Now, everything that I used to do at the temple, I can center it around where I am. That's why these, these, these guys that go all the way down, I ain't going to call them idiots. These guys that go all the way down to uh, Israel, and they travel out there for Passover, and they slice and open lambs and all that stuff. They do all that stuff, and it's not that it's necessarily, you know, some of it's wrong. Right. But the thought of it is not wrong. Right. To go visit our, our land and all that. That, that. that part is not wrong. But they think that that's the only way to do it because they, they missed the fact that Yahushua came and said it's spirit and truth. By trying to sacrifice now, you're impeding on what the Levites did. You're not a Levite. And if you are a Levite, I'm going to need you to pre prove it. And then once you get done proving, I'm going to need you to show me who sanctified you. All of it. All that got to be clean. Who going to line it all up? We can get past it. You know why? Nobody going to question it. You know why? Who been taught the law? Who been taught the law? It doesn't even offend us when we see that. Matter of fact, we look at it. A lot of us look at it. We see it on YouTube. Them, them guys over there and they cutting stuff open. and You know what I'm saying? They celebrating Passover. And ah, this is the true Passover. And ah, I look at the moon and this, that, another. And they looking at it. We look at it and we like, oh, man, that's nice. Because it doesn't even offend our senses. 
You know the law, you look at it and be like, ooh, you don't even want to watch. you like, ooh, them boys, they don't know what they doing. Uh, no, I ain't messing with that. Because you know it's like, nah, that's the Levite job. Who a Levite? Where's the altar? Where's the brazen altar? Right? Where's the pool that go in the front? Give me at least a tabernacle, you know what I'm saying? Throw a tent up or something. Do something for me. We're the holiest of holies. Who doing the service? Who all are the priests? And then who the Levites gonna, that's going to serve the priests? I just need, I mean, some of the stuff we got to figure out because it's like, now I'm eating of a sacrifice that was done improperly. What does that mean for me? Because at that point, if I'm doing it, then I'm against God's true instruction who said in spirit and truth. I'm going to be a little sanctuary unto you wherever you go. Let's break it down. I mean, I want, I want us to really think through this. If God tells you, I'm going to be a little sanctuary to you wherever you go, you're going to worship me in spirit and truth. That's God told you that. But then you look and you say, mm, the only real way to worship God is by going back to Israel and slaughtering this animal myself. Slaughtering this, this uh, lamb myself. That's the only way to really worship God. Does that mean we trust God or no? Can't be. Can't trust God. He just told you what to do. He told you exactly where it is. He just told you what to do. But you feel like, mm, ain't enough. Gotta do something else. Right? You're not trusting God. Christians will call that and they'll say that's legalistic. Right? They'll say that you're relying on your own works. Right? That's how they kind of characterize that, that type of thing. But that's not what it is. Essentially, you don't trust what God just told you. That's what it is. It's not that you're relying on your own works. You think that the works that you're doing are what is what God told you to do. You just don't trust what God told you to do, which makes you feel like he didn't tell you that. Right? So you're going to end up saying the New Testament's not real. You're going to end up saying all these things. It's not that you think you're doing something out of your own works or your own self-righteousness or whatever. And that's why this stuff never gets through to these people. Because we're not communicating honestly. Let's just keep it the word it is. You just don't trust God. You don't trust the word. Well, say it, you don't trust it. No, nah, brother, I don't, that New Testament, you know, New Testament changed by the Greeks. Okay, that's all I need to know. You just don't trust it. Now we can talk. Once we get to what the root issue is, now I can prove to you how, relax. Now I can prove to you how, you know what I'm saying, the New Testament ain't been changed, New Testament is valid. Now we can have that conversation if the, if the conversation is, you don't trust the New Testament. But if we never get to that, if it just comes down to, I'm doing it my way, you doing it your way, we'll never have that conversation. Right? We'll never get to the root of it. People will never have their issue resolved. Let's talk things out. Let's figure it out. Let's look into the word. Let's be honest. Let's be fair. Let's be vulnerable. Right? Let's look at it and be like, yeah, I was wrong. I just want to be right. If the goal, if we all sit in the room, we all want to be right, we ain't going to do too much arguing. We're going to do some discussion to get back, get down to the root of the issue, but we're not going to do too much arguing. We're we not going to be, we got to be kicking around details. That thing, we're going to get to the detail, we be like, oh, that's right. That's what it say. Right? A lot of these people start making excuses, kicking back, doing all these other extra things. We don't have time for it. Let's get back to it. This is uh, Exodus chapter, uh, what I want, 20? Exodus. This is Exodus chapter 20. Give me verse We have a chance for something, something special with the Most High God. And I only say it's special because we look out for Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse 23. I only say, it's only say special because we look out and you can't see it. Right? You can't, you can't see. You're not, you're not seeing people teaching the word accurately and fairly. Right? So we have an opportunity to learn the word, learn it correctly, and live it out. That's the part that's missing. You might have some people that say they know the word. They're not living it. They're hypocriting. They say they're a sinner themselves out of their own mouth. All right? We have an opportunity to look at it and live blamelessly and talk to the Most High God through his word. All right? This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 23. You shall not make with me gods of silver, Neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. 
An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. Right? So we look at it, the same animals that in Leviticus it told us, if you kill these animals anywhere but the tabernacle, it's as put imputed unto you as blood. Those same animals, if we go back before Leviticus, he said, hey, you make an altar. Right? Make an altar unto me. Wherever you want. Just make an altar. And then that's where you can slaughter these animals. So that was the first thing. And then it changed and said, okay, y'all used to sacrifice animals everywhere. Now only sacrifice them when you get the tabernacle. This was before we had a tabernacle. Make an altar. Don't put any tools on it. You, you, you slaughter your animals, but sacrifice them unto me. That was our first rule. Then we got a tabernacle. That changes now. Right? Don't you slaughter no animals unless you bring it to the priest. Don't make no altar. There's only one altar. You bring it to the priest. So that's, that's a change. And then we get into the land. Change again. All right. You can slaughter your animals. Don't you put them on no darn altar that you made yourself. All right? Just slaughter them. It ain't no sacrifice at all. Just kill the an animal and eat it. But if you want to sacrifice, you bring it to the priest, and you have to bring it to the place I designated. But you, can you make an offering, though? You have to bring it to the priest. You can make an offering, but it can't be an animal. You can't, you can't, you can't sacrifice the animal. But that it would have to be by a man, a god, a man of God, right? It have to be uh, God's man. So you look at it; he's dealing with an angel, like Samuel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so you dealing you dealing with an angel that's talking to you, and then at that point, you know what I'm saying, you do what you do. You know what I'm saying. But you're not you're not about to just willy nilly just you know what I'm saying just you know what I'm saying chop your stuff up and start doing it. That thing can't happen. But you know what I'm saying. It's lawful. It's lawful now to kill an animal. You know what I'm saying? So we just look at the changes. Those things happen because it's appropriate for the time. And what is it all centered around? We have a temple. We don't have a temple. We have a tabernacle. We move to a different land. Tabernacle's farther away. So all this is surrounded, uh, surrounded around our center. Right? Same thing with Yahushua. As the circumstances change around Yahushua, if Yahushua is a tabernacle, it's one thing. When Yahushua becomes a temple, that's another thing. When Yahushua becomes in the flesh, that's another thing. When Yahushua is sacrificed, right, and he goes up and sits at the right hand of the Father, it's another thing. Our circumstances change. All based off of where Yahushua is with us. All right? What else we got? Give me Romans chapter 3. Where Tony at? You know what I'm saying? Let's see a Tony. A Tony in the chat? Let me see a Tony. This is his book. Hmm. Every time I call Roman, he's like, yeah, that's my book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Tell Tony, you know what I'm saying? He probably going to watch it later. I don't see him on the on the list. Oh, Oka's on here. She said, don't ever get out of your car near a police with whatever. <laughs> Oka said, Oka said, don't ever get out of the car with the police, whatever this is on the belt. <laughs> he said, they're going to shoot me up. I heard that. Still watching? Mm -hmm. It's Romans chapter uh, 3. I don't know what verse. Give me verse, uh, let me see. Give me Romans chapter 3. Give me verse 19. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law. He said, whatever things the law says, guess who it say it to? Those who are under the law. Right? We look at it because the, the Christian think this is a change, right? The law is done away with. That's what they tell us. And this is one of the verses that they'll go to. They'll be like, see, obviously the law is done away with. Because they're saying whatever the law said, it said to whoever's under the law. What's next? You don't know. Then people are going to be judged without law that live without law. I think I'll catch them up either way. <laughs> hey, it's like, how you want it? You know what I'm saying? You want it this way or that way? You want it under the law? Or off from under the law. Because if you're off from under the law, you can't be saved. Yeah, yeah, right? You might not even get a court date. Yeah, that thing, that thing dumb. We ain't even, you don't even need to see him. Just uh, bail him, just pick him up. You good. You know what I'm saying? You not under the law, your butt done already. You under the law, now we can work with you. But now, you got some stuff you got to be strict to. All right? Let's hear about it. The things that the law says, it says to those who are under the law. What else? That every mouth may be stopped. Mm -hmm. in so, all... it, so now you see God's purpose. You're going to be under the law. you got to be under the law. 
for the purpose that your mouth has to be shushed. You got to shut your darn mouth. Okay, so now let's see if you shut your mouth. And all the world may become guilty before God. Mm-hmm. Therefore, by the deed. So if you're not under law, what that mean? You're going to be judged without law. What that mean for yourself, though? How do you feel if you're not under the law? Oh, you ain't got to do nothing. You ain't guilty. Yeah, sure. If God purpose it, I put this law in place. This is what God wants. The one who run the show, I put this in place because I want everybody to feel guilty. I want everybody to be guilty. And you got the nerve to say, you know what? I ain't under the law. What's that saying? I ain't guilty. I ain't guilty. I ain't do nothing wrong. These Christians, look, these Christians think they're doing something because they think they think they they teaching us something good, this, that, and other. Really what they're doing is uh mm, you removing me from a place of effectiveness. Most high God can't even touch me now. Right? He can't even touch me now. 100 percent Most high God can't touch nobody that's in disobedience. Right? He can't touch nobody in rebellion. Rebellion is the spirit of what? Wickedness. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. He can't touch nobody who, who, who's, who's in. He said, uh, give me um, Psalm chapter 5. It's Psalm 5, verse 4. Hold, we got there. We're going to come right back. I can guarantee right now, nobody going to get saved in disobedience. And I don't guarantee it because that's what I say. I guarantee it that book. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness. He said, yeah, thou art not a God who has pleasure in wickedness. What else? Neither shall evil dwell with thee. He said, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Right? The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. He said, the foolish, there's no way they're going to stand in your sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Everyone who work in iniquity, you hate them. These, like this book, we have to, first of all, we have to deal with it. We have to look at it and we say, okay, do I believe this is true? Right? We just, we just have to ask ourselves, do I trust that this is a true statement? If we trust that this is a true statement, now we have to deal with everything that it goes against that we've been taught. If we've been taught God loves everybody, but we read that, we have to say, do I believe God loves everybody? Or do I believe he hates workers of iniquity? Not hates iniquity, it says hates workers of iniquity. If you ask those two questions, those are contradictions. So now we have to settle it. Which one do I trust? Who told me that God loves everybody? Did I read that in the Bible? Or did I get that from somewhere? Do I trust that more than what I'm reading right at this moment? Is there more nuances that I have to figure out? Is there something else we have to look at? Sure, maybe. But at the end of the day, do we trust that this is true? Once you get past that type of stuff, then it helps you. It helps clarify it. It gets all of the wishy-washy the maybes, well, it's kind of like this and kind of not like that. Gets all that. Just make it black and white for you. You do it or you don't. You living in God or you not. That's what he said. He said, you got to be hot or you have to be cold. If you warm, I'm going to spit your butt darn out. That's what it is. We have to settle it and make it black and white. Is it what it say or not? Otherwise, we're going to be stuck in this la-la land. Where we kind of in between everything and we, you know, sometimes I feel this way and something. Nah, forget all that. What does it say and how do we roll with it? Are we going to roll with God every time or only when it feel good? Are we going to roll with God when people like me or when people only dislike? I mean, when people dislike me or only when people like me? I don't care if these people call, call me crazy. You can see the numbers drop right now on the, on the stream when, when I start talking like this. I don't, do you think I care about anything? The word got to get out. The truth got to get out. I can't sugarcoat it just because people like it. You give you a second witness. Psalms 11, 5. It's Psalms chapter 11, verse 5. The Lord tries the righteous. He tries the righteous. But the wicked and him that loves violence, his soul hates. So it's, at some point we have to look at it and we have to say, well, this is what God dealing with. So now when we go back to uh, Romans chapter 3, then we see that the most High God is telling us. You're under the law. I'm standing back. I'm trying to make everybody guilty. The guilt is literally what brings us to God. That is literally the part that brings us to God. That's the part that a lot of us miss. It's the guilt. It's the feeling that I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. That's humility. That's when God can touch me. 
when Yahushua was talking to the priests, and to, not, not the priests, I'm sorry, when he was talking to the Pharisees, right, and he is talking to our people, he asked them, or he told them, you all are blind. They came back and said, are you saying we blind? Stop touching that boy. Move, sit down. He said, are you saying that we blind? Grab, uh, so we coming back to Romans. Grab for me real quick, uh, John chapter 9. I don't know what verse I want, but it's towards the end. It's John chapter 9. We're going to come right back to Romans chapter 3. We got to do a little bit of talking. Just got to figure this thing out. Because this is the crux of it, right? This is where... This is where it get like a lot of stuff we can agree on, all right? We can, you know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff we can just, you know what I'm saying? It's like the, the stuff that's kind of like the peripheral stuff, the stuff that's on the side. Like, we can agree on that. But this is the crux of the matter. Like, this is what it all comes down to. How do I end up accepting the Most High God in a real way? Gotta feel like guilt. And that guilt gotta be guilt. That'll bring you to salvation. Paul calls it sorrow. Sorrow that leadeth to repentance is what Paul calls it. Godly sorrow. You see what I want, y'all? It is John 9, verse 40. This is John chapter 9, verse 40. Watch what he said. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Right? Like, oh, you trying to call us blind? Let's see. Yahushua said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, We see. Therefore, your sin remains. They didn't feel guilty. Had they been guilty, had they just said, You know what? We under the law. And that thing hit us. And we guilty before. Our mouths are stopped before the Most High God. Let me shut up. You know what? I am blind. Most High can deal with that. He's like, Okay, I can work with that. That's good. Now, Now I can show you some things. Now we can turn some things around. Right? As long as we are in a position where we riding high, we feeling excellent, we having joy, but there's still sin in our life, he can't do nothing with us. The only thing he can do is keep breaking our butts down. Because the only thing he can do is try to make us realize we not doing as good as we think we are. Then you're really in a bad position if you riding high, you got joy in your life, and you not being broken down by God. He not sending stuff after you. He not messing up your life. Because now you have nothing to get your attention. It's Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, what verse we leave off? 19. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law, uh-huh. that every mouth may be stopped, mm-hmm. and all the world may become guilty before God. Mm-hmm. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Mm-hmm. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm-hmm. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Mm-hmm. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yahushua the Messiah, unto all that, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Mm-hmm. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, mm-hmm. being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahushua the Messiah, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. All right, so we can look at it, and he's letting us know, this is my format. I'm putting you under the law. Everybody got to be guilty in the same spot. Right? Otherwise, if you're guilty, you might think that you could do this, what my, my son is doing. Right? So first I have to prove to you, you can't. You accept the fact that you can't. Then, follow what the man telling you to do. I put him in place, because he can. Right? I put him in place. So first step, you got to be under the law. Then you got to have your mouth stop and be guilty. Right? Then after you find that guilt, that's supposed to lead you to the man. You follow the man. His name is Yahushua. How are you going to know if you're guilty if you don't know what the law says? You no way. There's no way. That's why it's the knowledge of sin. Right? There's no way. So you learn. Like, how do you know that fornication is a sin? How do you know that lying is a sin? You won't. Right? That law comes. That law tell you it's wrong. No, like, how do you know, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody say I lied, that's wrong. How do you know that's wrong? Who told you lying was wrong? 
And it's dangerous, right? Because now, let's, let's explore that thought, right? Let's well, say let's, let's, there's let's, no law. There's no law involved in it. T tells me it's wrong to lie. Who am I trusting now? He's right. He's right, but who am I trusting? T. So now let's see. I catch T lying tomorrow, and he told me it's wrong to lie. My only source is T. Now T's untrustworthy. And now I say, you know what? I don't trust T. I don't know what he's talking about. That's what's happening today. Like, that's what's happening. You have pastors telling lies on the book. These people, they never teach them the book. They never teach them the source. They see the pastor is untrustworthy, and they walk away from it, and they say, you know what? The whole thing. Because we've related it back to the man instead of relating it back to God. How does the glory has come to the man, and we serve the man in thinking that we're serving God. That's what we started with. The we, we learn how to fear God by the precepts of man. We have to get away from that. That's why when we talk, the book is open. Like we, does, have, we read from the book. How does anyone know that lying is bad? Like, who, how do they know? And who taught them? And who taught them? Where did they get it from? Where did they get that lying is wrong? Got to come from the book. If it's right. Anything that's right got to come from the book. Got to come from the book. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing to discuss. We know, we all can agree, it came from the book. It came from God. It ain't nothing. I ain't about to entertain no other conversation. If it's right, it came from God, period. That's it. It ain't nothing to talk about there. So now the only thing that, that, that the discussion is, is there's some other point that we try to make. But if we just keep it at a base, it just simplify it. If it's right, it came from God. That's book. Any good thing, any good gift came from God, period. That's done. We got that. So now if it came from God, right, and then we have an opportunity to learn that, then a man has to teach us the law. The man has to teach us the book. It has to teach us the scriptures. Once we learn the scriptures, we find we're guilty. Once we find we're guilty, we say, okay, what do I do now? Then we're led to Yahushua. Once we're led to Yahushua, we have to follow what he says to get that guilt off of us. It's a clear path. That's what, that's what he set up. That's the order that he gave us. That's what we have to follow. Any other way of trying to get around it, even though a lot of Christians will call it self-righteous to say that I'm following the law or this, that, another. No, self-righteousness is saying I'm righteous outside of what God said is righteous. So if I say I'm, 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 I'm not under the law and then I don't follow what Yahushua will say, but at the same time I'm still saved because no matter what I do, God loves me. That is epitome of self-righteous. You've made yourself righteous outside of what the book laid out. He's giving you, start back at 19, he's giving you the whole game plan right now. The whole game plan, laying it out for you, this is how it goes. And it's simplified. I love when Paul writes, because it's simplified. Let's read it. Verse 19. Now we know that what thing soever the law says, it says unto them who are under the law. Uh huh. That every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may become guilty before God. Mm hmm. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be... How does the whole world become guilty? Got to be under the law. Is everybody in the world under the law? No. They got to be. But how is the whole... He said, what things are said uh, in the law are said to those under the law. That's talking to our people. Right? For the purpose that the whole world is going to be guilty. How did that make sense? Because if you... Oh, go ahead. What's written on the heart? The law. It's, it's written on, so the conscience. Is the law is written on whose heart? On, on the heart of man. That you have Already? Yeah, he said it's written on there. Okay. It, we, can, we can talk about that tonight. But, but what I'm saying is, he gave the word to his people. So nobody sins. So, okay, so we have to explore these thoughts, right? We have to explore them. I just, before you go too far, because that's a big one. Law is written on the heart. We know we have scripture that says that. And we're about to explore it and break it all down. But before you get too far in the thought, I want you to explore it. Just think about it. What does it actually mean, law written on the heart? Does that mean that everybody has the law in their heart, therefore they follow it? No, what it means is just what it says. Man is inexcusable. Okay. Because the law itself or the, uh, or the counsel of God mm -hmm. itself will excuse or, or it, it, will, it will make you guilty. What 
what's the benefit so of having the law written so on your said, heart? So he said, like he said, how do you know? How do you know mm-hmm. it, that you are a liar? Right. It's because God himself, like you were saying earlier, he transitioned or he, in a dispensation, he deal with man at different times, at various places, in different ways. Mm-hmm. But he get to a point where it's between you and him. So, and so he we don't need the word. The truth. No, I didn't say we don't need a prophet. I didn't say you didn't need a prophet. So, ex- I, so I, I know. I just want to get to the simple. What, the what are you saying? Simply. I'm saying what the word is saying. It's saying. It says right. The what does it mean to have a law written on your heart? What does that it do means for a person? That the word reveals itself to you in in the way. Without the word, or the word reveals itself well, by said, reading the word. He said that if you in, in Romans three, where you're reading right now, mm-hmm. it says that um, it's so nineteen. Right here. Now we know that uh, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law mm-hmm. that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by just for the just, so listen, just just for just say, can you read it? Just so we have one single place on the mic that's reading. Go ahead. Just so it's in order. Everything got to be in order. Now, right? We know that things, what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Right? So very clearly, the whole world got to become guilty for God. Grab uh, Romans chapter 2. Let's talk about the law written on the heart. Let's just get into it. Let's look into it. What do I want? Romans chapter 2, verse what? Is it verse 15? What I want. What I want, verse 15. This is when he said, it'll work. So the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience being seared. I mean, also being witnessed. So uh, give me verse, uh, give me verse, uh, give me verse uh, 12. For so this is Romans chapter 2, verse 12. Watch this. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. So everybody who has sinned without law will also perish without law. Okay, watch this. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Mm-hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Mm-hmm. For when the Gentiles which have no law, which have, have no not law, the law do by nature the thing contained in the law, these, uh-huh. these having not the law, are a law unto themselves. So, by, by, the, by the Gentiles who don't have the law, right, by doing things that happen to be in the law, they become a law unto themselves. Right? Keep going. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Which show the lo- work of the law written in their hearts. Is that saying that the law is written in everybody's heart? So let's be clear and make sure we understand what it's saying. Because this makes it make sense. If you, if you take this stuff and you just stretch it and you make it fit wherever you want and just improvise, it confuses people. It's saying the ones that do by nature the things contained in the it's law. It's the ones. I never read the law, never heard of it. But you know what? I ain't about to tell no lie. I ain't about to. I ain't, I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm, listen, I ain't never read no law. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm definitely going to love my neighbor. I'm only going to have one wife, right? Well, that ain't really law, right? But you you look at it, the law. I'm, I'm doing the law, but I've never heard the law. Never, Nobody's ever told me. Paul's saying this is indicative of the Most High God giving that to them. He gave them that spirit already. This is not saying everybody has that. He's in there certain people that never introduced the law, but they are law unto themselves by doing what the law says. Read it again for me. And then I'm going to show you all where the, I'm going to show you where the law really get written on your heart. It's all right. It's okay to sit back and just learn. I'm telling you, that thing will work out for everybody. I'm just telling you, it's okay. The things are confusing. That's why when I ask you these questions of what does it mean, and I knew I knew where we were going. I already know what it say. I'm familiar with it, and I knew it's going to feed in exactly what we're talking about. Hold on. I knew it was going to fit in exactly what we were talking about. So I wanted to see if you were going to say exactly what it said. But it's difficult because I think you're in a place where you're still in the middle on certain things. Without excuse, because God still will reveal the truth of the law to 
stupid. Oh, okay, we whether had a we had a totally it's misunderstanding. In letter or whether it's in spirit, God will always. Oh, I apologize. No, we had a, we had a totally misunderstanding. Was, so we had no disagreement then. Let's go back to Romans three, because yeah, there, we had no. There, I don't even know why we were disagreeing then. That's crazy. So in Romans three, it says everybody will be guilty. So that that says exactly what you were just saying. Okay, let's keep going then. Let's not even kill no time. Let's just keep moving. I don't know why we just spent all that time. This is Romans chapter 3, verse, uh, what? 19. 19? Verse Let's 20, go. 29. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No flesh. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's right. The law is the what? The knowledge of sin. That goes back to your point, brother. Right? You ain't going to know nothing about sin until you got the law. That's book. The knowledge of sin comes through the law. Keep going. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yahushua the Messiah, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. Be so that's him God. making the whole world guilty. They love that verse. Right? All have sinned and come short. So the whole world has now become guilty. Why is the whole world guilty and why did they fall short? Because they were under the law. Right? Keep going. Being justified freely by his grace uh -huh. through the redemption that is in Yahushua the Messiah. Uh -huh. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just. And the justifier of him which believe in Yahushua. Which believe in Yahushua. Keep going. Where is the boasting then? He said, where are you going to boast in? What are you boasting for? What else? It is excluded. Mm -hmm. By what law? Of works? Mm -hmm. No. But by the law of faith. Right? So not the law of works, but of the law of faith. Is there still a law? Yes. Is there still an instruction? Yes. Is there a change? Yes. You see, Yahushua comes along. And we change, we reappropriate our instruction, our law, towards him at this point. There was a law of works, right? Talking about the law written by Moses. And now, he said, not by the law of works are you justified. Because the law of works did what to us? Reveal sin. Reveal sin. It put the whole world in guilt. Now, Yahushua comes along, he says, I didn't come into the world to what? Condemn you. But you were already what? Guilty. Your butt been guilty. You've been under the law the entire time. Now, you can bow down and you can say, I'm the man. Yahushua is the one. He can take me there. What do I do from here? But if your butt stand around and say, oh no, I see, this whole time, you're blind. We have to get by. What does the book say? Go with it. Roll with it. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck. We gonna keep playing these games, keep rolling around, keep 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 sidestepping, doing all these different things, and then we miss it. Keep going out clubbing, keep making excuses, keep doing all these things, and we're going to miss it. Keep sleeping around, keep cheating, keep lying, and we're going to miss it. This is our chance to get the information. This for you too, Maddie. Right? You young. It's gonna be a lot of challenges coming. A lot of stuff coming. I know a lot of it already coming. I see you around this house. I know it's there. But this is our opportunity to get it right. We have the information. Not everybody has it. Just like there are Gentiles without law. When this time, in the time that this book was written, there's people without proper instruction to the law of Yahushua right now. They don't have the information. They've been confused. They've been told seven different things in their life. They went to seven different denominations. They try to go. They try to figure it out. Nobody agrees. And you know what they say? I'm just done. I'm just done. You know what? To me, I feel like God just works with me on a personal level. So I feel like I have a personal relationship with God. You know what that personal relationship is dictated by? How they feel. What they like. This is how I feel like God. I mean, I just don't feel God would do that. I don't feel like God would send any of his children to hell. I don't feel like God. So it's all based off of they feel. None of it is based off of verifiable information. None of it is based off of fact. None of it is based off of scripture. None of it is based off of word. We can get away from that. We have our opportunity now. All we got to do is go with the word say. All we got to do is go with the word say. Let's see. Where we leave off? Is 
is he the God of the Jews only? Mm -hmm. Is he not also of the Gentiles? God of all of us. Let's see. Yes. Of the Don't Gentiles let these Hebrews also. lie to you talking about these Gentiles ain't getting in. I mean, Gentiles stepping in before your butt. Y'all sure already told you. He said they can come. They gonna come from faraway lands. All right, it's Romans chapter three. We on verse twenty nine. Romans chapter three, verse twenty nine. He said. He said. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, I read we did that. read all that. I think he stepped out the room. Um, but we, you know what I'm saying? We, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we got Hebrews that teaching people. These Gentiles ain't getting in. When y'all was sure talking about, it's going to be people that come from faraway lands. Just come sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, and y'all, y'all Jews, y'all Hebrews, y'all but's going to be standing outside, gnashing your darn teeth, weeping, crying. These Gentiles getting in before a lot of y'all butts, running your darn mouth. God going to make a fool out of a lot of people. Why we want to sit and set ourselves up to be made a fool by God? That's crazy. We got the information. It is just a matter. All it is a matter of like and dislike. I just don't like what the book say. So I'm going to pretend like it don't say what it say. That's, that's really the crux of all the people that say they believe the word but do something different. That's really the crux of what it come down to. They either talk by or they believe themselves. I don't like what the words say, so I'm just not going to accept that it says that. And that's the culture that we live in. We can look, we can look at we can look at TV and just not accept what's happening, right? We've been kind of taught to live in that type of that that type of hypocrisy, right? I look at the the yeah, what's that show y'all watch? This is us, right? We look at it, we know that's not real life. But then that thing can still bring us darn to tears. We say, I'm sitting there almost crying watching that darn thing. So it's like, it's entertainment, all this stuff, the news, all this stuff. It teaches us to kind of like be okay. I'm not saying watching This Is Us is wrong or nothing like that. I'm just saying that these are the type of things that condition our minds to be like, all right, like I can create my fantasy world and still live in the regular world. Right? All these shows. I could have sworn I went Super Saiyan last week. I'm trying to tell you. All this stuff conditioned to be like, yeah. Sitting there in my living room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's trying to light our butts up. But we look at this stuff and we we got we have to learn how to separate it. We have to be able to lie right, for sure. But this is real. Right? This is us, but this is real. Right? Let's see. This is uh uh verse what 30? Uh in verse 29. Yeah. Is he the God of the Jews only? No. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith mm -hmm. and the uncircumcision through faith. Mm -hmm. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. He yeah. said, do we then make void the law through faith? How are all of us saved? Through faith. Through faith. If you're going to be saved, it's going to happen through faith. Does that then make the law void? In other words, is the law then done away with? God forbid. Shut your mouth, Christians. Shut your mouth. Let the word talk and just shut up. It's clear. It's easy that way. People will get it and people will be saved. Just trust God. When I get in here and talk, I'm not trying to flex the word and bend it and do nothing. What does it say? What does it say? If it say it, let's just go with it. Like, I think it ha the way we look at it, it has to be right. Like, it had whether I understand it, whether I get it, whether I like it, the word has to be right. Why in the world would I stand in the way of that? Like, what do I think the outcome is going to be? If I don't believe the word, then it's going to show. Because I'm not going to, if I don't believe this word, I, then I'm going to believe that I can stand in the way of what it say, make it up, change it, do whatever I want, and nothing going to happen to me. But now when you believe the word, you're not going to play them games. You dealing with somebody that believe the word, you're not playing them games. He said, God forbid. God forbid. What up? Yay, we established the law. Okay. You want to go on chapter four? Mm-hmm. Why would you establish a law if you're being saved by faith? Oh, you can answer. Go ahead. Because the law in and of itself is a moral law. It's, it's a right doing. In and of itself, it's a right doing. So it's, if God is right and all right, this is what the word say he is, then it is established through his righteousness, which is a faith.
saying the same thing. Yeah, so the law, we established the law. Mad, mad is not, the circumcision is not by hands, what man was doing, cutting away. Uh, According to the law. Yeah, but by so, so let's be clear. Let's be clear. Man wasn't just doing something, right? The law commanded us to circumcise ourselves, right? So it was, it was, it's not, it's not, yeah, but it was, the law commanded us to circumcise ourselves, right? So we are in a position now where Paul's saying it's not the circumcision that saves you. Same thing as saying the law, the, you will not be justified by the works of the law. Right? Because the circumcision is a work. It's not the whole law. It's one work of the law. So by doing that circumcision, that's not going to justify you no more than making a sacrifice. No more than loving your neighbor as yourself. Right? Which is a law. Right? So we look at it, none of those individual things will justify you. Not even all of them all together in the law will justify you. Right? Because you have already been condemned. So how do we establish the law through faith? Because the law prophesies of Yahushua. Right? By following the law that says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, we'll probably read it next week, but by following the law that tells you to do what Yahushua says, when he comes along, you are still following the law by doing what he said. How is the law going to be done away with and made void if the law is the one who pointed you to your master? You make a fool out of yourself by going against what the word says. It doesn't make sense. If you don't believe Moses' words, you won't believe me. He told, he told it to us the whole time in the gospel. He told it to us the whole God. How are you going to believe me if you don't believe Moses? He told you to kiss the son. He said they have Moses. Right? Even if somebody rose from the dead, they won't believe him. They have Moses. He's letting you know you should be able to get there by Moses. Why do we think it's void? I think you we have a different plan. We have a different idea. Something else is being taught to us. We have to, rec- that ha- we have to recognize that and that has to feel dangerous to us. Because as long as we're comfortable in that space, people are going to be confused. People are going to end up going to hell who don't necessarily have to go to hell as far as we're concerned. Not as far as God is concerned. He knows who's going and who's not. But as far as we're concerned, as far as what we can do, and as far as the effort we can put in, there's going to be people who are going to be going to hell that don't necessarily have to go to hell, and we can potentially be a part in the Most High God touching them just by giving clean, flat information and standing against confusion, standing against lie, standing against misunderstanding. Because we have it. We have the information. We don't have an excuse. We have it. It's there. We can choose to accept it or not, but it's there. Right? Right? So once the Most High God put that information out there, we just have to make the choice to just say, you know what? That's right. No matter, I don't care how I learned it or how these people, what these people saying or how they sound or how many degrees they have behind their names or the special words that they use. Oh, this is the mosaic and the, the, oh, this is the eschatological. I don't care nothing about that stuff. At the end of the day, what does it say? Is that right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We don't have time. These people, they real smart. Some of them too smart for their own good. They're 100% smarter than me. I talk to EP, I'll be like, listen, I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm smarter than you. You know way more than me. Right? We talk to the Hebrew dude that, that apparently knows Hebrew and all that. I'm not saying I know Hebrew. I'm not saying he's smarter. I'm just saying what I do know, I'm not an idiot. Right? I know this. You know what I'm saying? So you have to tell me where I'm wrong here for me to be able to say, okay, let me take down what I'm saying. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, we know how to deal in logic. Limited information, but logic. That logic, when fit with God, becomes wisdom. Even if it's not knowledge, right? There can be a whole wealth of knowledge and little wisdom. There can be a whole lot of wisdom and little knowledge. Which one you think going to take you further? You got that wisdom, you can go. You can move. All you do is take knowledge and add it in, and you operate with knowledge, right? But the wisdom is what's going to make you go. Actually established. So what does this 
sin is you know, established to make you guilty because it can't save you. So the only thing it can do is show you as a moral compass where you are. No, that's not the only thing it can do. What is it saying? No, we already read exactly what it does. Now I'll, no, I'll go over. I know I'm going to summarize right now. I'm going to summarize exactly what we just read. It starts off and it tells us that the law is putting everybody under guilt, right? So then everybody is imputed sin through the law, whether you're under the law or not officially, right? But everybody, the whole world, is going to be sinful through the law, right? Now you have that guilt. That guilt then brings you to need justification, and you can follow and ask for Yahushua, or not ask, but follow and do what Yahushua says in order to be saved, right? So then now once you get to that point, he says, does that make the law void, right? Following the law through faith or the law of faith. Does that make the law void? The law of works, the law of Moses, does that make it void? He says, God forbid. Certainly not, right? It does not make it void. Why? Because the law, right, through faith is what confirms us. The law brought us down and put us in a place of meekness. The law itself also tells us, follow Yahushua in different words, right? So by us doing exactly what the law says in that point, which says you're a sinner, the law condemns us, and you should follow the prophet that's going to come along amongst your brethren. Right? By doing that, we not only have been made guilty by the law, but we also have followed the law and what it says at the same time. So the law at that point is established. It served the purpose, the exact purpose that Paul just told us it came for, to bring us down and to lead us as a schoolmaster to Yahushua. We established the law. And when Yahushua comes back, all of those things that's in the law will be performed. Back up and running. Right? The whole law, there. Because the law is what? Right. And it's just. And it's good. At the end of the day. And that's when, that's when it'll be written on your hearts. Because we're going to be doing it perfectly. Well, that's not what it said. You said it's already Oh, no, it didn't. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's go to Hebrew. What I want? Hebrews 8? I don't know. Let's see what we got. Hebrews 8, maybe? It might not be Hebrews 8. 36. Let's try Hebrews 8 first and then Hebrews 10 if that's not what I want. Ezekiel is a prophecy. Matter of fact, let's go to the story. Why are we going to read Hebrew? This is Jeremiah chapter 31. Is it 31 or 32? 31, 31. It's Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Let's just go to the story. Why are we going to? Ain't no sense to go to the middle man. Not when you got. I, if I can call, if I can call the sword, why well, I'ma call the middleman? Middleman ain't gonna do nothing at my job. So we got, we got like two companies that we go through. So we deal with one big company. I ain't gonna say no name. You know what I'm saying? Technically, I don't be, I don't like mentioning the name of my job because technically, if I mention them, you know what I'm saying? Technically, they'd be like, well, we disagree with your views. Get your butt up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mention their butt. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna defame their character. They be like, look at this crazy man out here. Talking about, you know what I'm saying, gay people going to hell. You know what I'm talking about? He worked for this this place. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it mess around, mess up their business. You know what I'm saying? But if we look at it, and uh, we deal with a middleman. You know what I'm saying? So, we could go directly to this big company that manages all this other good stuff, right? But we have a other company that we pay that, you know, is in the, in the in-between. So, for the last few months, I've been telling them, I don't understand why we still paying these people. We have what we need now to go directly to the to the big company. You know what I'm saying? Like we can do that thing directly. And now we in the works of maybe trying to see how that thing works. If you got the, the direct connection to the source, why don't we go to the middleman? Why don't we talk to Hebrews when I can just go to Jeremiah? All right, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Let's see what we're talking about. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that mm -hmm. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Okay. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says mm -hmm. the Lord. I What's going to be the covenant? After those days? After those days, oh, okay. says the Lord. What's going to be the covenant? I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So this is the new covenant. Let's be very clear of what, about what the new covenant is. He said, I will put my law in their inward parts. And then where? 
and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Okay, and what else going to happen? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. and every Nobody going to have to teach no more. He said they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying know the Lord. They never going to have to tell you to know the Lord. Why? For they shall all know me. Everybody going to know him. From the least of them to the greatest of them. From the least to the greatest, everybody going to know the man? So, so. That's so, a new covenant. So, that being the new covenant, and the new covenant being written in blood, right? It is. It, we just, let's, let, let's not go too far. Let's just keep it real simple. Let's go too far. I'm just okay. saying. Christ died. He did. And the new covenant or the new testament was written in blood, right? And mm -hmm. and and according to what you just read just now, it said the law of faith, which is which is written on the heart of man to know God, because that's what it said in in the second in the second chapter and in the third chapter. It didn't say that exactly, but you can I think I think what's happening what, is what, you're what taking a lot of information in at one time and it might be confusing. No, it's not confusing me. I'm just putting it I'm I'm You make it stuff fit that right don't now. necessarily fit. But what I'm saying is if it's not written on the heart currently, mm -hmm. because I didn't get the word through the letter uh at the time that it was given, right? I had to come to it. So if the, Personal experience, so, that's so, fine. So, so, if the, so, so at some point, there had to be something in me that identified with something in him, which made me know that that was true. Not, not just because it was written in this book, but because there was a connection there that I understood it to be true. So, so what I'm saying... Whatever what your I'm experience saying, is. What, what I'm saying is, it just said into... And it is written, on, it's written, it's, circum, it's circumcision of the heart. So it is written in the heart. Now, it may be that... That's not what it said, but keep okay, going. Okay, well, I, I, I can go back and read it, right? Or, well, he can read it, 29. Yeah, we already read it. But I don't want to kill but, too much time rereading the same thing but, if, but if said, we're not going to accept it what it said. written code and circumcisions are a transgression of the law, for it is not, it, for he is not a Jew who is one hourly, nor is circumcision that which is hourly in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. Okay. So it's written on the heart of man. That's not what that just said, but I understand I understand what you're getting at. Let's just get to your the crux of your point, or do you want to get the, to your the, crux of your point? My point was that it is written on the heart. Okay. And so yet, the spirit when, when we operate in truth and in spirit, it does, um, 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 uh, not, I'm not, not the word justified, but it, it, it alert you. It's, it's not, it's another word I'm thinking of right now, but it, it let you know. Because you don't have a way, you don't have a way of knowing other than through the You law. know why you don't have a way? Because it's, if it's not, if. You, 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 you was on the right track. You know, why don't you have a way? Even why don't you have a way? Just say it. Just answer. It's got. There has to. There have to be a witness. So why don't you? Why don't just? You was about to say it. Don't don't back off. You. It's not, right. I'm it's right. To. It's it's right to say it. Why don't you have a way of knowing without what? Without reading the book. Period. That's it. So but there's. So I'm it's not that we don't have a way. It's a way that but we just I'm didn't saying, give. We didn't operate with the what, tools that what God I'm gave us. Is if you before you get to the book, you don't know. You there. You are led to. The Right, but that's not the conversation. So, so yeah, one hundred percent. But that doesn't indicate. Okay, okay. So I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But this, this is this is why this is why I try to slowly go through, and I, I really want you to just take what the words say, listen to it, because what's happening is you're conflating God drawing us, which is discussed in John chapter six, right? The Father drawing us with the law being written on our house, just because. The Most High draws us does not mean that the law is written on us. That's not what the Bible describes. Now, let's very clearly and slowly read through exactly where it describes the new covenant and the law written on our heart. And we can see exactly the signs of that happening. Let's read it again. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Take our time. Let, let's not try to argue. Forget all. Let's just the word is right. We know that. Like, I know we can agree there. 
The word is absolutely right. Forget what I'm saying. Forget what you're saying in no disrespectful way. I'm just saying let's look at the word and let's just go with what we say and let's think about it. What it says. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The Not days a are coming, a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. But this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So if it was already like that, why is that necessary to happen? Right. We have to ask ourselves these questions. If we were already had the law on us and it was already written in our inward parts, why do we need the law written in our inward parts? Yeah, we know that's not true. It wasn't, it wasn't. Exactly. That's what I know. This is this is I'm, this is a logical extra. I'm not trying to argue. This is a logical exercise where we're just saying, let's look at what's being said. Let's compare what's, what's being said to what we think or what, what people think. Right? So a lot of people think that this has already happened, but we can know that that is not already happening because otherwise there would be no need for a new covenant. Right? So he's saying the law would be on their hearts and in their inward parts. And then what would be the signs of that? What would be the result of having those in your hearts? Keep going. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. Right? So just like what we just talked about, there's no way for us to know if we're doing something right or wrong or know what, 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 what a sin is unless we have the law, unless we have the book, the Bible. Sure, we're drawn to nobody going to come to God on their own, right? Nobody, nobody comes to the Son unless drawn by the Father. That's a book. Right. So definitely the father draws us to get us to that place of knowledge. Right. But he also tells us in John chapter six, verse 44, he says, or verse 45, he said, and it is written in the prophets that they'll, they shall all be what of God? Taught of God. All of them have to be taught of God. Therefore, anyone who hears and learns of the father comes to the son. Right. So we know that those are two different things. Without any knowledge whatsoever, you can be drawn to the Father. If the law was written in your hearts, you would already have the knowledge. Therefore, you would not need to be heard or taught. Right? So there's an order that we're talking about. And let's try to put it up on the board. You get drawn first. Right? After you get drawn... When the law's written in your hearts, everybody's going to know the most high. It's not so like that today because people still need to be taught of God. Right? So you get drawn first. After you get drawn, then you come to the information. Right? After you get the info, then you move on to obeying it. That's hearing and learning. Right? Then you obey. Right? After you obey and end up with the rest of your life, you come to the sun. This is the order that everything must be done. Once you get to that place, in the resurrection, that's when the law is written on your hearts. I agree totally with that. That is the order and things happening. So at this point, God does draw you, and you don't have any information, right? There's something in you that says, you know what, let me go to this church, or let me go to this Bible study, or let me hear what this person has to say. That's the Father. He definitely did that. You still don't have the information, and you still don't have the law in your heart. So the new covenant, as described by Jeremiah, will put the law in your heart. When the law is on your heart, nobody's going to have to teach you anything. You don't need information at that point. And the only way to get to that point is if you're already taught. So we can't skip anything. You have to be taught the word. You have to obey the word. And that's the only way you can get to the son. And the son is going to be the one who draws it on your heart, who writes the law on your heart. That's Once right. the law is written on your heart, you no longer have a need for anybody to know God because everybody from the least to the greatest will know the most high God. That's why you say by faith because it is, you have faith that he will write it on your heart in the resurrection. Who hopes for what he already has is what Paul would say. So, so are you... Uh, and that's why he so said... I'm not going to drink the wine until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom. Because so, the covenant so, wasn't so, sealed. So you're saying, so what I'm understanding now is the new, the, the new covenant has not been established. 
It's not sealed. Yeah, new covenant not done yet. No. And and we have not he, entered into the new covenant. That's why he said so everybody's still said guilty we under not the law. Into the new covenant. Nah, that's a fact. And so it's we know that's the new covenant right so, there. So we can't so testify so to that happening. So none is so none has experienced the resurrection, right? Right. No. So, but the law of faith is still in effect. That's what makes it in so, effect. So the, that's so what the hope law is. Of faith is what actually justifies. Yes. Not because it hasn't happened yet. You have to operate as though it has. Exactly. Happened. Okay. Law is. I got that. Understood. Yeah. No, I see. I see. I see where you're going. What you trying to say? Okay. Laws written on your heart. We believe that by faith. Therefore, I'm considering the law written on my heart now because I believe it. And that's, now that's a fair distinction. And I understand that. I get it. But if if that becomes, if, if your, your zeal to say that or look at it that way confuses the reality and how it's taught, then you stand in the way of the word. I get what you're saying, though, 100%. I see, I see what you, where you're going with it. But, again, that's not how it's taught in the word, consistently at least. right? It's taught in the word in both ways where I'm going to tell you, okay, believe this by faith. But at the same time, this is what's really going on. We just have to be consistent with what the word is teaching. Any questions? Any other questions? Let's go ahead and pray out.